Hey guys, Ray from Love you RV. So about a week ago, I uh, did a video with an initial test of this SRNE DC to DC charger with a built-in MPPT solar controller. It's a 50 amp charger. Uh, if you missed that, I'll link back to it. So uh, I would wasn't sure if I was going to actually install it in my system or try to review it just outside of my system using external batteries, but I decided to uh, use it in my system. It has a few uh, features that I kind of interested in testing out. Uh, I had this uh, Renogy 40 amp DC to DC charger in there. You can see I installed it March 2020 and it's it's been fine it's charged well and no problems there and I link back to the video here where I installed it in a quite an in-depth in installation video also did some off-grid testing with the generator and the alternator and the solar and uh, and then also updated in May I added a wireless switch which was nice because from the cab I could turn it on and off and I even did some uh, comparisons with my tow cable charging with the lithium batteries so you can go look at that if you've missed those videos but anyway in this video I'm going to install take out that Renogy and install this SRNE in its place and then I'll be able to use it we're out boondocking for the the winter and early spring here so I'll be able to use it out here in the real life real world conditions and we'll see how it stands up and see if there's any problems with it so let's get to the installation video Start with the truck hookup from my previous install of the Renogy. So right here is where I've connected to the battery. Uh, this Ram truck uh, had a 180 amp alternator stock. Um, when I ordered it, I up I got the optional 220 amp alternator. So with that, I got this high output port here that they put on there if you want to hook up winches or light bars and things like that so it was very convenient for me to hook up the DC to DC charger cable and here I've got a, a bus fuse terminal fuse at 60 amp which I had previously for my uh, Renogy um, it's convenient because this uh, SRNE draws max 60 amps so it should work out got a four gauge cable that drops down underneath the firewall there and it goes along the truck underneath I've woven it through and used a wire loom and stuff like that to find a path usually fo I followed kind of what the wiring ports po points that they had and then it popped up right here and then came back here and I put a port right there so this is a what they call an Anderson power pole connector it's good for four gauge or two gauge so I, I set that port there, just screwed it into the truck, and then made myself a cable to go to the RV. Now this cable is also four gauge, but it's actually jumper cables. And I chose that because it was very convenient because the black and red are fused together, made a nice cable. Instead of two cables, I just have one. One point though is these jumper cables come with a, what they call copper clad, aluminum copper clad. Um, they're not as good at carrying current and they can oxidize and have bad connections. So this is actually a pure, 100% pure copper jumper cable. So it's important to look for those. They're uh, a little more expensive, but they'll pass more energy and not uh, as cause as much resistance and heating. Now with the Renogy, it put out 40 amps and I got pretty well 40 amps into my battery. It drew about 50 amps from the alternator and these cables never even got warm so that was good so that I think these were about a 20 foot set so that I could go in to my rig kind of went in around the pin box up around there and then I just bought some stuff at Home Depot to kind of make an access port there and they come in here along there and they used to go into this charger terminals here I had the charger set up over here. Now this charger's got the terminals at the bottom. So I had to get myself some terminal blocks just to extend that. Not ideal, but uh, I didn't want to replace this cable at this point in time. Just wanted to get it running. So just put some terminal blocks there, ran some cables down to the, the DC to DC charger. And that's where it's uh, living now, um, in place of where the, the Renogy was. There's a few things I've added 
down there you see a white box and that's actually a wireless switch um, and I have it wired in here pull the cover here I actually have it wired into the on off port here so basically what I can do is if I don't if I'm driving the truck and I don't want to be charging say I'm going to pull a really steep grade and I don't want the extra load on the motor or I'm in stop and go traffic and I don't want the alternator to you know start heating up I can just hit a, a wireless uh, key fob and uh, it'll turn off the charging on this and then I can turn it back on so it's like a wireless remote switch so you can see here I've also got this is the ground panels um, I had an existing system for my ground panel where I used an old 30 amp cable and I ran it out same thing out to the pin box and I do have a port at the pin box where I have it plugged in right now so I've got some panels out there and some long cable and then it's going up here so this thing I can just plug here and then I can put my panels that cable is about 25 feet, so I can move them all around wherever I need them, which is convenient. Or I could unplug this and run the cable up through the landing jack. Just gives me a few options. Uh, so the output comes out of this thing and then goes up, over, and then into this breaker here, which is a 60 amp breaker. So the max output of the DC to DC charger is 50 amps, I put a 60 amp breaker in there. And then it's going down, and you see this, it goes into another switch. So I have two uh, battery banks right now. I have four line energies, and then I have a 200 amp hour, uh, ampere time battery. So I wanted to be able to independently charge them. And so I thought, oh, that'd be cool if, uh, if my main bank was charged up. I could charge, you know, the second bank with this, so I can switch by charging between the two with that. So right now I have it set for this uh, amper time lithium battery. So it comes down here, and then it goes through. There's a, a fuse block here, just for protection, and then it goes into this battery. I have another switch down there to switch between battery banks to feed my inverter and my my RVD stuff. So a little complex, but it's grown over the years. Anyway, it's all in there and everything seems to, to test okay. I also have the, the app it needs a Bluetooth dongle. That's what you see up here, this BT. And it's going down and it's plugging in there so I can get onto my smartphone and do settings and monitor it, which which is nice because in the truck I could have, you know, Anne look at it and tell me what if it's charging and everything is okay just through the, the smartphone app. So I have like three SRNE controllers now. The DC to DC charger and it has its own um, solar controller. And then I have the 40 amp and a 40 amp and they're all going into my whichever battery I choose to charge. So right now these two are charging my main bank and then this one is actually charging this battery. Lots of options, can switch whatever I want. Uh, this one is kind of interesting. I was looking at this one. This one has a load, so it has a, a, an extra output. And I thought that would be perfect for my um, tire pressure monitor system. It has a repeater. I have it mounted right here. So I can now switch it on and off. I've got this thing, it's this load output supplying that repeater. So I can actually, so let me go here and go to load. 15, I set it for option 15. There's load, so if I go like this, then it turns on the load up there, you see. And now it's draw, it's powering my uh, my repeater for my tire pressure monitor system. So that's kind of cool. Turn it on before I go. So let's give her a test. You can see there right now I have my solar panels running. It's showing that it's putting in around how many amps we're putting in here. 12.9 it's funny because actually my clamp on 
is saying about 14. A little bit of disagreement between those. Anyway, I'm going to start up the truck. See right now I have the truck plugged in. It's showing 12.6 volts on the truck battery system. Now I haven't uh, had it where the solar is supposed to charge the truck. I haven't had that option yet. My, my truck battery hasn't gone down low enough for that to happen or anything. So uh, somebody told me though that it does work. They have, a, they have I think the 30 amp model and they informed me that they've, they've proven it does work. Um, I haven't been able to get them to, this to charge solar and alternator at the same time. I have emailed the company, haven't heard back yet, but I'll let you know in the next video on that. Anyway, let's start up the truck. Okay, truck is running. You can see 14.1 volts. Hasn't switched over yet. Still showing solar. There we go, something changed. There we go, so the generator light came on. They call the alternator a generator sometimes, because just the, the, the translation and language, they kind of mix the two terms, but that's the alternator comes on. You can see the 14 volts there going to the battery system in here, 14.8. 12 volt is what's coming in, and 644 watts. 42 amps it's showing here, showing the alternators putting out 51 amps. Let's see what my meter says here. So my clamp-on's actually saying 45.6 amps, so I kind of believe this more. I've, had, I've kind of used it a lot and it's been pretty accurate, so maybe this thing's not quite accurate. Anyway, you can see the solar stopped. Nothing's coming through in the solar, so it seems to switch between the two. So we'll just up the truck's RPM just to, to see if anything changes. Okay, so using the app here, showing around 42 amps into the battery and the uh, alternator drawing about 51 amps, so I can raise the RPM here in this RAM. There we go. So we're at a little over a thousand. Really, there's no change. Yeah, it doesn't really seem to change much. Oh, a little bit there. Now, changed briefly. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of change. Next I switched over so that we're supplying the bigger battery bank and both these controllers are charging at the same time as the DC to DC charger. So I notice there's a little bit of a drop in amperage here showing 39.6 for a total of 70 amps. So the chargers sometimes will affect each other when they're all charging at the same time due to slightly different maybe voltage values and different lengths of wire, that sort of thing can cause different voltage drops. But still pretty good. I could be going down the road right now and putting 70 amps into my battery. Just turn the truck off and see what solar I'm actually getting right now and then we can subtract that and see what it was putting in compared to before when it was just the, just the truck. So in just solar out of those two controllers, I'm getting around 36 amps. So there was some loss by running all three at once <clears throat> compared to just a single. Anyway, decided to show you the installation. I wasn't sure if I was gonna install it because this thing's been working really good, but I thought better to install it and actually use it in the real world so I could give you a little bit of better review of actually using it in a real life situation. So I'll use it for a while and come back with my uh, complete review, pros and cons, that sort of thing, and see if they answer any of the questions I asked about this in my previous video. If you missed that, I'll link back to it. Till next time, Ray from Love Your RV. Cheers, guys.